this is just a brief video I am gonna I'm not gonna say devote but I'm gonna give this as an explanation to people who are here from abroad from the US Western Europe Canada Australia and so on and they were always asking about who could be trusted in Slovenia whom, whom to trust to help me out how to help me out uh, they basically they wanted to get an idea about Udba uh, Udba is was government organization of Greater Serbia, previously known as Yugoslavia. Organization of more than just um, undercover police, that's what it should be. It should be like something like related to MI5, MI6, Central Intelligence Agency, uh, Sia, Stasi, maybe. I think closer to Stasi than anything else. Stasi was Eastern German police. Their job was basically to pretty much do what I stated. Other agencies have done it in a sense of uh, state security uh, however I, I, I approximated Udba to Stasi because none of these foreign services secret police if you want uh, would go and assassinate uh, their members of society for the sake of uh, the third party ethnic cleansing in this greater Yugoslav Federation composition of these uh, states which have give their oath to become part of greater Serbia basically after the Second World War II, a uh, country ran by Josip Broz Tito, there was this uh, ideology of ethnic cleansing for the sake of the biggest uh, of all these nations uh, Serbian nation, basically, repression. So they would go and they would kill people next to forced unemployment, I should say psychiatric services, also with exiles to uh, what was known, for instance, Goli Otok, mm -hmm. or people would disappear inside of the prisons, and they would not come out sometimes ever. People would simply disappear. This is just the way it was. This is this was the job of the Ud, but now this, this they performed this job mostly through social networking such as uh, beginning from the kindergartens, schools and of course more than anywhere uh, at employment. It was just a regular um, interaction between society uh, and certain people who were trusted by Belgrade authorities uh, to seek within the society a portion of non-compliant population. Now, this was not this in this case this is Slovenia but in Croatia this could be Croatia or in Bosnia, Bosnia, or Macedonia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Montenegro. 
in Serbia, I understand they also operated. <laughs> I don't see how. Uh, they had to operate. If they would not operate, you know, operate because it was a federation, uh, it couldn't operate anywhere. So they had to have this in Serbia as well. If nowhere else on the paper and in the media or whatever, right? But they really operated and did tremendous damage. in Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Macedonia, Montenegro, were just for saying something that would not be, um, you know, they just, they just had these people, your bosses or even co-workers, they would sometimes transfer you to co-worker and a co-worker would be just digging in you, uh, testing you out with certain issues, or would redistribute collectively, they would redistribute certain idea which you would have to embrace or become suspicious, and sooner than not ousted from the work environment, from social environment, destroyed. Eventually they would waste you. It was for the greater Serbia. This is what makes it different from other countries. In Russia, they wouldn't have done this for the sake of China or United States or whatever. Um, in Russia, the only thing they they performed, KGB performed, was uh, they enforced uh, Russian security, basically. That's all it is. A Russian or a Serbian couldn't go wrong with their services, security services. Just as American couldn't go wrong with the Central Intelligence Agency if it was according to what agency expected. Um, Stasi wouldn't even go and do the stuff like this for the sake of bigger Russia. They would go and they would eliminate certain people to keep intact their... Well, post-World War II, Eastern uh, European political agenda. But I don't know if they would have gone somewhere in Germany, in Eastern Germany, talking about Eastern Germany, to, to destroy people, basically. So they would settle in people from Russia and stuff like that, in Slovenia and Croatia and elsewhere. This was the case, Bosnia. This was actively case the ask actively was the issue that you could easily find yourself unemployed uh, and uh, basically scattered all over the place with some foreigners taking your work positions uh, real estate marrying with a local woman and so on and so forth this was just uh, totally in line with the ethnic, what is known as ethnic cleansing. Now, back to this question about whom you would trust, basically, whom, whom you could have trusted. It was impossible for me to answer this question. You can't answer this question jerked up. Because, first of all, you don't even know who the people are asking these questions. Now... you were familiarized with um, certain figures in Slovenia for which many of these foreign politicians have fallen for. You can see here, let's say, Boucher. Boucher was a police officer. This was a Udba man, this guy. This was straight from Udba. This was a police officer, Yugoslav police officer, a police officer in Yugoslavia. And then you have Janis Jansha, uh, the same thing. This was a Udba guy. Both of these guys, both of these guys were Udba guys. You know, one was even a police officer, a uniformed police officer. The other one was undercover police officer. Interesting about Jansha was that he 
compare himself. Therefore, he is Udba Time, two Central Intelligence Agency, KGB, and and you know, all the foreign intelligence services that would do a state security uh, by simply explaining to me, well, you know, Sebastian. Um, Christian, this is just, um, they, they have this kind of services everywhere. You know, he couldn't hide his ID. Now, of course, I wouldn't go into issues of Milan Kuchan or Borut Fahor or Tanya Fayon and so on and so forth, because that would be a waste of time and I would come out as a retard if I would have. These are the people, basically, this is here, they took initiative from the hands of Slovenian people for the sake of Slovenian independence. This exactly this year. I said, who are these people here? And then you have this guy, also he was highly trusted. For instance, this guy here, this this here, for instance. His name is Loise Peterland. He's supposed to be a Christian personality and good connections, I understand, in uh, in Brussels and so on and so on. So who, who would you go and trust? Well, the thing about it is, in a case like this, really nobody. You can't. You have to make your own judgment. In case you did not know, and I'm sure you did, because probably it's the same elsewhere. I don't know how much difference is between uh, what we used to have here in Slovenia under this Yugoslav, therefore greater Serbian regime and... Um, whatever you had in other countries, but anybody with degree, you understand, with degree, with a high degree, as if you had a high school and two year more um, high degree, degree actually, uh, I'm not gonna even go into university degree and uh, uh, either status of professor, doctor, or something like this, uh, because Obviously, you're absolutely, absolutely talking about the people that would be ransacked by these authorities. I'm not going to say night and day, but uh, you couldn't get with degree anywhere in any, any profession, anywhere. In any sector of work, remember this was especially because this was a socialist society. You could have a even private company if you were trusted enough. Um, however, the majority of industry was in the hands of the state. So who? So if I'm asking you, if you're talking about the people that have beginning the high school up, all had to participate in this organization, whether you like it or not. You had to participate. We had, practically we had an Udba subject taught in the school, in a high school. They would give you, they would give you Socialism, um, some old problem, I don't know how you say that. And within a society, it was actually expected that you're a part of it, part of this Udba system. They did not actually question you whether you ought to belong to this political option or not. We didn't have multi-political system here we had here only political options which was either you were inside a communist party or you were not you understand we didn't have versed political whatever you whatever they associate in other countries this spectrum of voters into 
We didn't have any of that stuff in Yugoslavia. You were either inside of the Communist Party or you were not. Simple. It was expected of the people that whoever did go to the church to participate in this stuff too, regardless of it. You understand? There was no exception for the children. There's no private schools here or anything like this. Whether you're Christian or whatever it is, you were to sit in front of a teacher, professor, who gave you, if you were lucky enough to get to high school, uh, meaning that you were troubling for the system, uh, who would give you lessons about Marxism, communism, well, probably Eastern Germans understand me where I'm coming from, basically. Whether you like it or not, it, it didn't make no difference. Now, obviously, that there were people that did go inside of the church. Yeah? There obviously were people that went inside of the church. They went inside of the church in Slovenia, in Croatia, and uh, in Bosnia. Uh, they were religious uh, Muslims, thanks God for this diversity because it was this kind of diversity somehow that managed to um, break away mentally from this centralization in Belgrade which I don't have to repeat to you what that was all about because now I'm sure you get an idea that everybody was centered toward this direction you're not complying with the rest of the members, society members, with, you know, exact uh, whatever it was anticipated of you. If you want propaganda, that means that you are just, as I stated earlier, ousted, destroyed, uh, sentenced to be for waste, basically, wasted. They had many different ways to destroy you. And if you did somehow manage to penetrate somehow out of this shithole, out of this prison, Balkan prison, this is what it was, this Yugoslavia, if you were interesting enough, chances were they would send someone to whack you. Either to Germany, to the US, or uh, to some other country. Um, they would get things done through Russia, through Soviet Union. Wherever they could not penetrate, they would use, if it was important, interesting enough, uh, they would oftentimes get lucky using people like Putin. That's how Putin got into this world of diplomacy, global network. Uh, exactly through these types of channels. And so, of the people that I demonstrated you, whom the hell would you trust? If you were, if you were to come in the system and you would observe this, um, I would definitely say nobody. Uh, last time, I think it was in 97 that Germans desperately tried to stop this and I do believe it was the case they tried to stop this crime uh, by bringing people together and and just uh, call it quit and it's it but they couldn't regardless of it they could not have stopped this um, there was too much interest in Slovenian politicians for this crime to go on. Had these Slovenian politicians uh, acted on their own, that really does not matter. That doesn't matter. I am Slovenian native, but the thing about it is that if I'm going to go and involve Belgrade and Moscow, they bam, 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 bam. Uh, I think I'm taking away, therefore, importance away from that subject, the core subject 
which I started in this video. Whom would you trust as a foreign diplomat, right? So you have these people taking over a control, I should say taking ownership of this case, a complete control of this case, not talking about Milan Kuchan, obviously, uh, bringing me there to Ljubljana to his um, court over there known as Murgle, a portion, a certain region where you used to have this nothing other than this Udba people that would travel to Belgrade and back. And you have all these people that I demonstrated you doing absolutely nothing about it. Uh, it becomes evident quickly that something is wrong with the picture. Very, very wrong with the picture. I myself obviously had not forgotten what it was like in 90 to separate from this genocidal Serbian oppression known as Federation of Yugoslav Republics. I had absolutely not the idea about the threats that were lining itself one after another from Belgrade memories of the people which I I was closely um, observing you know in a people who's especially those um, final days of prior to separation from from this Yugoslavia uh, I will not forget uh, everybody was nervous about this stuff everybody was tense um, but everybody somehow appeared to me to be decided that we are just not gonna back down I was actually really surprised that people are so decided uh, willing to stand up and to to planes tanks I was actually asking myself uh, where the hell are we gonna get uh, something that that w w will be capable to stand up to to this uh, to this machinery uh, we we were paying for since the end of the war World War Two all these tanks all this all this equipment where the hell uh, how uh, but you know I figure out oh, just like other people that uh, we're not gonna let go no matter what it, it won't be possible for them to to just right here next to Austria or Italy Hungary just like this with us to do the same with us like they did over there in Kosovo with Albanian people so for me the memories uh, on this first generation Slovenian military which was established as soon as upon independence they they started their own military here in Slovenia uh, which I served proudly uh, you see the memories when I was brought back from the US just like 40 years later they, they, they didn't left me I was still in that period in that time but the people that I demonstrated you these people were never ever really on on the same frequency as I was and this is exactly because of the reasons that I stated you earlier all these people that I demonstrated you also had degrees they had higher education these are the people that you would meet at work and they would be basically disseminating you a propaganda Belga, Belgrade propaganda you know it could be that some of these people would actually even look look the sideways 
and they would be giving you like you know hmm, let's be just compliant but quiet till the right time comes signals but all these people without absolutely evidently some that even participated as a police officers in Yugoslavia others evidently with Udba secret police such as was let's say father of Melania Trump let's say Milan Kuchan or Borat Pahor uh, this kind of people this is not even worth it to talk about this is this is obviously this is yeah, this is a waste of time but yet it was exactly this kind of people that were the loudest during this independence process they were always the loudest they were always taking initiative about absolutely everything except when something ugly would happen someplace you you didn't hear about them shit like assassination let's say of Milan Kramberger it was like taken like as if nothing happened basically maybe there was a confusion for the portion of the voters that uh, pertained to his uh, political option that's basically how I felt uh, but I was not really um, I did not really acknowledge that there would be like what I would expect you understand this happened just two years after the separation from Yugoslavia how the fuck is that not strange to you something like this how the hell is that not strange to you that the guy you have seen in Belgrade and Serbia and Belgrade on and on becomes instead the president to me this would be a strange stuff to me that would raise suspicion enough high to eventually try these people to eventually go and try the police to eventually start a thorough investigation to find out exactly what happened because this is not I suppose for the most of you that you voted for independent Slovenia which I really question why you did is acceptable but yet nothing happened really nothing happened the picture just rolled on and uh, I was I was in a very bad situation here in Slovenia uh, they came here inside of the house the Sudba people police literally requesting from me to join them I refused I mean to me this was just something that everything was blatantly wrong with but I didn't have no place I could go and seek protection from it obviously this was a police you understand the neighbors involved in it my father my family definitely would not dare to 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 say oh anything blatantly like this and so I think that was like it seemed to me wrong everything was everything was not the way it should be the case with an independent country things were very wrong however I made in my mind that I would emigrate out of this mess which I considered uh, over the course of the time because of Eastern Bloc entire Eastern Bloc had fallen apart from Poland to Czech Republic Romania Bulgaria it is a big country it's even Ukraine you know I should say even Belarus everybody broke free away from it Ukraine was surprising to me that it became independent I did not much know about Ukraine 
I don't know that Ukrainians feel so strong about about their national uh, value that they value their um, independence, their the right to self determination so much. I have no idea about this. It was very very surprising to me. This was a very very surprising issue. Ukrainians uh, were a confused people. On a Balkan war, Ukrainians joined a uh, Serbian side, believe it or not. They would have uh, volunteered themselves for uh, assistance to the Serbs for the cost of the uh, citizenship. Um, it was very very hard situation in Ukraine I think Ukrainians alone didn't know whether Ukraine, Ukraine is gonna survive as a, as a sovereign state they definitely want better life they wanted freedom uh, and so I definitely don't blame them I am definitely happy for whatever possibly I could have done for these people uh, I hope definitely that was the case i hope i hope so i know it was all kinds of issues but this this is how i i pretty much estimated this stuff i figure out that this is going to take some time to for the people to put themselves upright and acknowledge basically where they are based on what i had this interactions here with the police with the psychiatrist that would knock on the door and demand for me to join udba uh i figure it's gonna take a time better off i would definitely be by immigrating abroad and if things somehow would not work out then you would return back in already more sovereign the right to work state whatever but that was not the case it turned out to be exactly the opposite it turned into a civil war here in Slovenia instead which is especially strange because this was the most economically prosperous of all Eastern European independent states uh, little country the standard the in separation from uh, greater Serbia known as Yugoslavia in Slovenia was probably as four time as high as in let's say in Poland I don't know maybe five times or in Czech Republic that was really difficult that was really poverty uh, people afford themselves here life quality wise much more than over there definitely and freedom wise and everything else um, but this standard started to when compared to Czech Republic and Poland uh, stagnate like this like a plane diving down for a crash or something like this and those are much bigger countries it's Czech let's say 10 million Poland 40 million and so on and so forth and this little country that should be like a Switzerland I insisted on uh, was just going to hell basically was just diving like this down uh crushing all the barriers of uh, self-destruction possibilities probabilities that define all the uh, <laughs> physical laws of gravity possibilities of, of self-destroying yourself as a sovereign nation with a record speed managed to hurl out of Slovenia the best investors the world possibly could wish for any country in the world which I brought to Slovenia from Scandinavian investors to all kinds of investors that pledged their money to make Slovenia is financially 
uh, independent, prosperous, just as Switzerland. Yet he was a small man that come out, came out and uh, hurled with the help of uh, Danilo Turk, Borat Fahol, all this element that we were fighting against, these people out with their money, with their capital, which afterwards settled in United States of America, in Germany, in Poland, in Czech Republic, the businesses which still exist today and are still the most lucrative in those countries I mentioned. It's it's unbelievable. And that's what makes me ask myself why did Slovenian people opted out of this greater Serbia in the first place? This is what I don't understand. It just I don't get it. I can not understand really any of it. I could perhaps say I can understand that they were doing this to one man, but I really can't. I can't because as a Slovenian taxpayer, citizen here, native, I definitely want to know opposed to the people who knew all about it. Those are the people that I demonstrated you, the people that should be opposition from Milan Kuchin, opposition from Borg Pahor, opposition from Tanya Fayon, opposition from all this ex-Yugoslav, so-called Yugoslav communist members, people. I definitely would be interested in knowing what's going on in this location known as Murglia in Ljubljana. And it was not only in Murglia in Ljubljana, it was inside of this house and they all knew about the shit that went on. I would definitely want to know about who is this guy they're doing this stuff to. I would absolutely definitely want to know who is the one doing this to this guy. And there is no country in this world that would not trigger certain process in a situation like this to stop crime against native, right? You don't want people whom you have just liberated yourself from to continue to, to start doing something like this in your newly independent country. Or do you? I mean, especially if you're opposition. I'm sure that you would go and that you would stop the process, ask individual, make a contact with him, take him out of this MK Ultra, put him in a real world, sit him at a table, and have a conversation with one. As far as, as per, why did you immigrate to United States of America in the first place? After explaining one, what he was used for, you would accomplish this as a psychologist, which would primarily ask person about what political option in a certain system he belongs to, whom did he vote for, whom did he, whom does he trust, and you would follow up through that political option, you would connect this individual, obviously option, as I said, he would trust to, to obtain the results you would want from an individual, therefore, so that you would involve him in a normal process in this country, so that he wouldn't return anywhere in a place like this, unsafe place like this. I was nothing done like this. They found excuses in absolutely everything, including the excuse that there is still war in Balkans. If we do something like this, we can have a conflict. This was like even in 97, they stated to me stuff like this. That's crazy. It's just two years before the end of the 
three years before the end of the war on Balkans completely. That's insane. Especially when you consider how far Slovenia is, especially when you consider that with the money in 1995, I brought from abroad here the people who decided everything about NATO and European Union, which opportunity I have offered Slovenian politicians. They offered Slovenian politicians the opportunity to enroll Slovenia immediately into a NATO and inside of the European Union. I was severely beaten up as a reward for this matter. For this, I was beaten up as fuck. Nobody ever said sorry to me. Nobody ever, ever anything, absolutely ever, ever anything declared, explained to me anything about those issues. It was just like you say you pulled that under the rug through the beatings, through abuse, so that person simply have other issues to worry about, not how it all started, how far it all went. As far as the people, this was unbelievable because it was always somebody that got in my face that was searching for job. It was always somebody that got in my face that needed to ensure a retirement or promotion at work to earn more money and this shit ladies and gentlemen I'm not gonna say that included elderly people that feared for their well-being but it all extended to the airplane tickets to a fine destinations holiday destinations, I should say, worldwide, uh, discounted real estate and so on, and never-ending story. So the simple question, if we go back to whom you would trust under such terms? Well, definitely you would want to trust somebody like myself because I have had a lot of problem in my life for not accepting an invitation into the circle of this um, I don't even want to get into it I think I was clear about what Udba was um, you could have trusted you could have trusted in this really the people that also wanted to stop uh, they also wanted to stop not this this you would you would you would uh, you would kill the person if you would trust this here what about people like let's say this guy here this individual let's say immigrated because it was the same just as I was he couldn't find peace, he couldn't find terms, he would agree. He immigrated to Germany and worked over there as an immigrant. There was a few other people like this that they just did not settle for any of it. Simple as this. This guy I can tell you that it's just a bigger proof what I stated to you earlier about these people. That it was a fake that abandoned one. As soon as he began to see, rather than the reason why he immigrated to Germany, in those people. And consequently, well, he was gone pretty young, if you ask me, due to a lot of 
all kinds of health problems. Um, this is how this UDBA system works. Not everybody's going to come out and say, hey, man, do you see my ID from this UDBA organization, agency, if you like? It's not going to be written for everybody that, you know, was in the service of Yugoslav uh, police, let's say. You're not gonna, you're not gonna have for everybody, on the, not even on the internet, you're not gonna have, it's not gonna be written for everybody. It's not for every individual that was in the Woodba that you're gonna have a capacity, ability to access documents about his whereabouts. Funny man, you can't even see anywhere photos of him being a police officer in Yugoslavia. So you got to make up your own call. You got to use your common sense. You got to understand who the person is based on his actions, based on his attitude, based on his response you get. So that for you to know whom you can connect to establish that relationship based on which you can start uh, build something, prosper, prosper into something common with the common goals or you're going to invest all your efforts into, into some kind of option that it will not give you absolutely any, any chance for anything other than well, it's it's a self-destructive investment, you know. Doing business with the people like this is just is just uh, how can I say? This is a process that you got to make a call on where you want to get how you want to prosper things, how you want to get things done uh, that literally involves interacting with the people. I think interacting with the people is good, is great. Uh, it's a must in such, uh, when such issues are involved, but as I stated, it, it, then it all depends how far you want to get, where, what. The people that you interacted with here in Slovenia, this is all Udba people. None of these people have done absolutely anything about this stuff. These people... These people stood on the side and they observed me being beaten up. And truly, the more I was beaten up, and I'm actually repeating the words from Bord Pahar. But the problem here is that it can be disputed. You can dispute these words. Because of what I stated, nobody have absolutely done anything about this to stop it. Nobody in Slovenia did its citizenship duty. As a matter of fact, you understand? The longer the beatings go, the less I understand you. You, these, are, these are words from Bord Pahor, and I, I completely acknowledge that I repeat them. But as I stated, they are true. I can't argue with them because this is the way it was. So that I would go and pick up a different tune for the sake of somebody who, uh, let's say, is more busy insulting Roma community with all sorts of names, comparing them to pickpocketers, thieves, and everything you possibly come across, while at the same time building himself uh, with stolen money, literally, villas. Yeah, I dare you just to say, to come to me and say it's not stolen. 
I dare you. Earn through corruption, therefore insight into socially sensitive issues that are later abused and for the sake of people like Milan Kuch and Bored Pahor to prosper this greater Serbian agenda here in Slovenia so that Slovenia alone can be seen as a country as of inequality in the eyes of international society you, you don't have to worry about where you get this information about this discrimination claims and all this you don't have to worry about it it's it's don't worry about it. the president of the state will come and will give you and will ask you actually pay you to go and submit complaint as a UN representative against Slovenia this is the way it works because this is how they operate they destroy the, the country from within that's how it is plus it's well used to destroy people from within too through unemployment through all kinds of stuff in Yugoslavia they had to use different excuses to get it done it's not about when one goes down everybody falls down no fuck that I'm asking myself why did you vote for independence of this country in the first place what was in it for you why what was in it for you this is this is these are the real questions now this is the real question today what did you vote for sovereignty of this country in year 90 what was in it for you why i mean what did you accomplish with it what what exactly was in it for you if you're good with what went on in so-called yugoslavia why why the hell did you vote for this for this sovereignty and independence and so on and so forth what did you expect it from it and how far did you get with your expectations how much your life turned for better just known basically that you have a border over there along the Kolpa river on the south of slovenia but really and yeah thanks god you have croatia in between and parts of bosnia or whatever was not destroyed that's all that separates you really from yesterday but inside in here how much how much do you feel when you go at the workplace when you interact with your boss at the workplace how much freer do you feel today when compared to uh, 90 and most of your dads and moms are now retired people from 90 that remember this independence process that understand the complicity of one are really not so many and because it's so politically did not saw did not heard done now i don't remember anything Where is this uh, on a long term? Knowing that this 
graph I stated is dive down like a like a plane that you hit one and it's just going yeah ready to crash down when compared to 90 and 2022 what exactly have you done in a sense of uh, your ability to go out there post a comment on the new side the way you think it should be uh, question journalism question media houses present them with the questions openly ask them have ability to uh, to interact your mind with what should be the case already in year 1990 things of your concern things of uh, your priority as a part of this country here when opposed to what you see today on the media and inside of the politic i am really not touched with fact that this year this ex-communists have gotten so many seats in the parliament because it, it actually presents the real picture of what I stated to you about Mr. Yelko Katsin and Peter La and Yansha and all that garbage. They don't fucking exist. They don't fucking exist. They didn't exist then. They don't exist. And because you know that they do not exist. And because you did voted for this idea of independence maybe you should ask yourself well that's all i'm gonna say today is september the 4th 2022 everybody everybody you got to understand everybody in this country beginning the high school they have taken time for one to become part of this udba because these are the people this kind of education guaranteed people to have some sort of supervisory position at work as i stated most of the work positions were state i say owned financed subsidized very few was in a private sector not that private sector would differ in any way politically wise everybody there is absolutely no no exception to this rule there is so much no exception to this rule that the people that i demonstrated you pull their tail between their legs on a fucking day one of this case they knew all about what went on everywhere who was who was doing to whom and who was the one who was beaten up but these people once were part of the system and they quickly understood where their place is within this new system they didn't object to any of that stuff. They went along with the flow. For you to get the society going in direction of independence, then you have to get the people that have declined in absolutely every level to have anything to do with the Belgrade with the ex Yugoslav communist option in other words that is the only way and grow within a healthy base of the population that will try towards their own needs 
based on this place here in this country. You cannot expect psychiatrists, as I mentioned earlier, that would go and sit with me at the table and ask those questions without having a police support behind him. People like myself that published videos in Yugoslavia or had some kind of, uh, have transmitted some kind of news or have written articles. It was not people with a high degree at work that would supervise them what they do at work. They had literally psychiatrists such as was Zoran Muja, let's say inside a psychiatric hospital that would daily sit at literature or radio or whatever the guy transmitted, whoever transmitted, and would devote their time to whatever this guy is actually doing. The Udba did not stop with people supervising other people with we did not stop with positioning people with 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 a high school higher than a high school with degrees and so on supervising people at the workplace occasionally set them up with some shoddy co-workers to see who they are dealing with every here and there no 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 sir they had a specially designated people that will take their time to see their prospects, their future prisoner. I say future prisoner because really nobody was safe from this Udba. Man, you could have done it for 30 fucking years. Exactly what they told you. I repeat their words. And would be one time that you would do something a little different and you would have been gone. The psychiatrists that when all this shit started they didn't have that power this is have no no police behind them and inside of the police we have the same structure in 95 as we had in 89 in 89 nobody in Slovenia dared to f around with a with some kind of uh, stuff that you're gonna go independence, yeah, yeah. Hmm. People disappeared big time. And the people in independent Slovenia who should have done that, whom you, Slovenian voters, have uh, entrusted votes, these people haven't done anything about it. These people were not bothered with the structures, with the old structures of the police. To them, everything was okay. To them, everything... I don't understand at all anything about this stuff. I don't understand how you... Well, I, I'm not the only one that does not understand. There was no country that was involved in this stuff. That's why I mentioned Germany earlier, that they tried to stop this in 97. Including the Israel. They couldn't fucking understand any of it. Why would you want to have a, your own native subject to this kind of practice? That's fucking insane. That's like, what are you trying to terminate your country? This country did not even start at the time. And as I stated to you about Milan Kuchan earlier, we have to be quiet because there's still war in the Balkans. This independence, pro-independence uh, people in Slovenia waited together with Milan Kuchan, hoped maybe even for that this war in the Balkans would end with defeat of Croatia and Bosnia. And we would somehow just untangle ourselves back to what used to be before 1990.
I don't know any about any other explanation for it. It's difficult to do business of any kind, political business related with people that don't remember 1990. If you don't remember the 1990 and if you don't remember the difference prior to 1990 and right now because of what these people have done there is actually this is horror here in Slovenia the way I see it it's a fucking horror that's a good news I have a good news for you it's not everything so dark this is the lady that was newly elected as a as a justice minister uh, just announced today with her colleagues There will be a new prison they're going to build in Slovenia for the males. And it's going to be near Ljubljana. So those of you that are not too far from Ljubljana, that's a capital yeah, of Slovenia. You see? The location is called Dobrunia and it's only going to be for the males. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be easy for you. You will be, it's going to be easier for we, for you. And you see, we're getting somewhere. We, we're actually getting somewhere. It's paid off to get inside of the European Union. I don't know whether it's going to be European Union that will finance eventually this project. But hey, it's not bad. And so when you're going to travel to the new prison, near Ljubljana it's going to be easy for you whenever they're going to allow you to go home it's going to take much 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 less right to travel home uh, it's going to be in Dobrunje Dobrunje that's that's really that's going to be that's going to be very very close to Ljubljana so not everything is so dark See, that's that's pretty close to the main to the main city to the capital it's actually like central slovenia so now even if you're from celia or from nova mesa like myself or from copper let's say or from kran you're gonna have about the same uh, proximity to this jail here so you see we're getting somewhere like toto Cotunia said europa unite unite europe Thanks for watching this video. Today is September the 4th, 2022. As usual, take care of yourself.